The American dream is perhaps the most powerful vibe that has ever existed. To me, it's not just the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which are universal desires, but also the way of life we've concocted on this giant island in the middle of the ocean that's supposed to give us all an equal shot at that dream. <laughs> Moose is coming in! We're supposed to have an economic system that allows people to pursue their dreams to the fullest of their potential, and a political system to kick the asses of kings and Hitlers who threaten those dreams. The American Dream is a hopeful and optimistic vision for life. Perhaps the greatest practical manifestation of Enlightenment ideals. Of course, this country has a long history of absolutely fucking over women, Native Americans, indigenous peoples, black people, Asians, Hispanics, religious minorities, poor people, gay people, disabled people, basically anyone who isn't a relatively well-off white guy. Over time, we have gotten slightly better at this shit, which is supposed to be a sign that this whole American experiment thing is working. And I would argue this progressive vibe is central to our self-mythologized divine justification as to why we, as America, should be the world superpower. The American dream is packaged nicely and sold to us when we're kids, and this tantalizing reward that we can be whoever we want to be if we participate in the system is supposed to be the reason we buy into this whole social contract. And for a while, in post-World War II America, the dream seemed to be in full swing. You know what I'm talking about. The tranquil life in the suburbs. The husband who provides for his family and pushes the world into tomorrow. The wife who cooks and cleans and makes the home. The 2.5 kids. The house with the white picket fence. The hatred of communism. The stuff, the stuff, the stuff. Our technological progress and manufacturing prowess were the backbone upon which the American dream could be literally sold to everyone at an affordable price. Of course, once again, this was really only for relatively well-off white people, but it was still a powerful dream to sell to the masses. Everyone wanted it all, and it felt like everyone could get it all. Or at least get it all one day if they were willing to put in the elbow grease, and we're white dudes. Watch these old ass black and white videos and you can feel the optimism. Check out how far we've come, they seem to say, and we've barely scratched the surface. These videos suggest that if America wasn't a utopia right then and there, then we were surely doing the right things to eventually one day get there. Fast forward 75 years, and shit is different. It's good to be in something from the ground floor. I came too late for that. I know. But lately I'm getting the feeling that I came in at the end. The best is over. Many Americans, I think, feel that way. The palpable optimism for the future you can see in post-war America, the vision of flying cars and world hunger being solved by food pills, seems downright delusional today. If your vision of the future isn't some hellscape apocalypse where global warming has ass-fucked the world into being inhospitable, that is, if we don't all nuke each other into literal dust first, then I know you must be religious because you are straight up praying for a miracle at this point. The shit is bad, bro. It's hard to be a person under 40, mainly because the math ain't mathing when it comes to being hopeful about the future. Wages have stagnated. Social mobility is down. Wealth inequality is way up. Politics is so polarized, nothing gets done. Housing's impossible. Rent's expensive. Groceries are expensive. Everything's expensive. Money goes to some random fuck country thousands of miles away so they can kill people while healthcare in this country continues to suck ass. The social organizations that used to keep us together, marriage, friends, religion, clubs, politics, are few and far in between. And most people's jobs are either aggressively mid or downright exploitative. The average American spends eight hours a day getting treated like cattle to make money for some suit who isn't even in the trenches. And the other eight hours, commuting, or watching TV, or watching their kids, or cooking, or cleaning, or listening to an app tell them not to lose their shit until it's time for them to go to sleep, and wake up, and do it all over again. On the weekends, they catch up on all the chores they put off during the week, they get 10 days off a year to go somewhere and spend money and pump more capital in the system, they do this for 40 years, and then they die. I know what everyone with a PhD in being PhD. annoying is gonna say, actually, that's a super good life. There's lots of people who have it way worse than that. Our material standards of living have gone way up. Shut the fuck up and stop complaining. But I don't feel like we've cleared the absolute minimum bar that's a nanometer off the ground is a good argument. If you want to use that line, you could also argue the Founding Fathers were a bunch of little bitches who should have just been grateful to serve under the yoke of the king. Don't get me wrong, 
I agree modern American life is way better than shitting in a forest and dying of dysentery somewhere, but it doesn't feel like we've fully actualized on all of our potential. It feels like life should be better than this. The off-quoted Keynes prediction that we'd be working 15-hour weeks never came to fruition, though it wasn't because he was wrong about us becoming much more efficient and productive. We do work less than we did a hundred years ago, but nowhere near as much as technological progress seemingly should have helped us. For my very basic internet research, the popular argument as to why Keynes' prediction didn't come true seems to be that people's desires for stuff has increased at the same rate productivity has increased so everyone works the same amount to keep up with the Joneses. But I feel like just saying, oh, well actually people just want to work 40 hour weeks instead of 15 hour weeks is a very 2010s grind scent pilled argument. So guess what motherfuckers, if an economist can pull a theory out of their fucking ass, so can I. Welcome to class, bitches. Source, me. I do agree rising consumerism is a big reason why we still work a ton, but it's also not like workers really have a choice. When you walk into an interview for a full-time job, you don't really have the option to ask if you can just work 20 hours a week and get paid half the salary. Most jobs either require you work full-time or pay so little you have no choice but to work insane hours to make ends meet. Yes, I know there are some random, obscure, well-paying part-time jobs, or you can freelance, or you can find a remote job where no one knows you exist, but these are out of reach for the average American and by far the exception, not the rule. I'm not saying that there aren't any people who want to work 40 or 60 or 80 hours a week for more pay. Y'all psychos knock yourself out. I'm just saying there isn't really a choice right now to go below 40 hours a week even though it feels like productivity gains should have made that an option. Technologically speaking, I think we definitely have the ability to do 40 hours of 1954 work in 20 hours in 2024. I mean, if you put me in my laptop in 1954, we would run laps around any Fortune 500 company. Another theory might be that there's just a lot of work that needs to be done in the world, and the invisible hand has just made sure everyone's working the perfectly optimal number of hours. I don't think that's true though, because many workers are upfront about how they're not 100% productive. Plus, the pandemic provided a very clear delineation between jobs that are actually essential to society functioning and jobs that are kind of just computer touching. So why was Keynes wrong? Why haven't productivity gains led to less time spent working? I think it's because in our modern world, employers have all the power and leverage. And what do employers care about? They don't give a fuck about you or your life or your ability to have a good time. They just care about profits and growth. There are lots of reasons why employers would only want to hire full-time employees. And from an economic standpoint, I get it. If I owned a business and my goal was to solely maximize profits, I too would not give a fuck about what any of my employees wanted and just force them to work the maximum number of hours I could get from them. The 40 hour work week, while it may not be the perfect ideal situation for the American population at large, is a pretty good deal for employers. I know what y'all World Economic Forum motherfuckers are gonna say, well this is how a free market works and how we have competition and innovation and growth, 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 stuff, stuff, stuff. But honestly, this shit doesn't make sense to me. Why does the entire system cater to the growth and profit desires of the employer class, no matter what their employees might want? Why can't we have a system that caters to the desires of employees? who would probably be much happier and healthier if they didn't work so much. I mean, there are way less employers in America than employees, and I thought we lived in a goddamn democracy. I thought this was America! Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America! I think in this whole discussion, the elephant in the room is growth. I don't want to dive too deep into semantics, because people really start getting up in arms when you start calling shit capitalist, or communist, or neoliberal, or socialist. But I'd argue that the entire economic system of the world currently revolves around and really only works with a fundamental assumption of never-ending growth. Growth is tied to that post-war vision of optimism. That we're always going to be technologically advancing and more efficient and the numbies are always going to go up. But growth isn't just a nice side effect of the economy. It's fundamental to the economy working at all. What the fuck happens if people stop buying iPads for each other on Jesus' birthday? The economy freaks the fuck out. What if people stop traveling places and spending tourist dollars? The economy freaks the fuck out. And so we're indoctrinated into the cult of consumerism from a young age. 
lest we stop buying stuff, 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 and corporations can't pay back the debts they've accumulated. That's why the marketing and advertising industries are so huge. Because the powers that be know that they need to always be selling shit to the next generation for this thing to work. Excess is the name of the game. If you're not growing, you're stagnating. And once again, the system literally doesn't work if it stagnates. The stock market, for example, always has to go up in the long run. The economy literally doesn't work if it goes down in the long run, because then it hits zero and all hell breaks loose. Since the economic system needs to always be growing, it also needs the world population to always be growing to provide new workers and consumers. Look at France, China, or Japan to see how a literal lack of growth in the population is disastrous for their economies. And this population problem is coming to America very soon. They're saying they're gonna have to give people less social security starting in 2034 because of declining birth rates. I am not gonna be retired by 2034, bro, so I imagine by the time I retire, Social security is going to be your complimentary choice of a soft drink every month. The system doesn't work unless more and more babies are being born. And at that point, your life isn't even your own, but some kind of economic engine to keep the entire deck of cards afloat. On top of all that, when more and more people are being born, we need more and more stuff for those people. And I'm not even talking about dumb shit. I'm talking about food and water and housing, which are actually starting to become gigantic problems across America. We basically built the economy as a giant pyramid scheme that needs to feed on more and more literal human bodies to sustain itself, which is very cool, but also a ginormous problem because you cannot grow forever. Don't fuck with me, economists. There are physical limits to how fast and how much you can grow, and countries are starting to hit those limits. And I swear to God, if someone says in the long run we're all dead, guess what, motherfuckers? The long run is here, and if we keep this up, we actually are all gonna be dead soon. Even if we could grow forever, I don't think we want infinite growth. Look at how infinite growth has obliterated the planet. I think the mindset of progress at all costs was a noble goal for the Enlightenment time period when most people were living in super shitty conditions, but now, tons of people still live in super shitty conditions, and soon they're gonna live in really hot super shitty conditions. I don't really have much more to say on this point, but this is actually probably the most important thing, so I'll just say it again. None of the supposed benefits of neoliberalism matter if the Earth becomes literally inhospitable in the process. The counter-argument that VCs and other proponents of capitalism will probably give you is, no, growth and progress are always good, there's billions of people across the world whose lives could still be improved with capitalist growth, and we'll just figure out all these problems with better technology. AI or the metaverse or crypto is gonna be so transformative, it's gonna make all these issues obsolete. Sure, if you wanna say that, I can't really argue with you because it's not even really an argument. It's basically like praying to God to fix our problems. It's not an actual plan for fixing anything, it's Oh, we hope the AI god singularity is gonna be benevolent and pull something out of his fucking ass to fix global warming. Even if you think AI or some other technology is gonna save us, what if it doesn't? What then? Should we just wait until the last fucking second when it's too late to do anything else and wait for a random fucking breakthrough to save us? I would prefer if we figured out an actual tangible solution we could start implementing now instead of just saying, yeah, don't worry, bro, we're gonna figure it out. If you wanna learn more about this stuff, you can check out the degrowth movement, but suffice it to say that personally, I think our country and people and planet could benefit greatly from cooling it a bit on the growth. But enacting true change on this front is no easy task. Who has the power to change this system? Like I said before, it's really the employers who are in charge right now, not the employees, unless we could figure out a way to get a gigantic union of every employee in America, which honestly isn't a bad idea, but I'm not the guy to figure that out, so we're gonna move on. I'd argue our current economic system still exists today, not because it's the best system, but because it has the momentum of being the default system already, and the people in charge like the system, so they're not really incentivized to change it. To billionaires, to Silicon Valley, to Wall Street, the American dream is working out just great. And so they think to themselves, 
Well, everything's great. There's a survivorship bias here with the people with the money and power are the ones reaping the rewards of the current system. And so the people in charge are content to let things be business as usual. They are never going to willingly change the system and give up their own power. Why would they give up their absolute baller lives to help out a bunch of peasants who don't even have the drive to work as hard as them and succeed. You can either get on the Sigma Grindset lifestyle and work 60 hours a week at Tesla fulfilling Elon's dream, or you can work 60 hours a week at Starbucks filling up Elon's coffee, or you can fucking die. Sure, statistically, some people will get lucky and rise to the ranks, and they'll hype them up to the media to keep everyone focused on the rat race. But for most people, the system today isn't supposed to give you a shot at success. It's supposed to keep you in the servant class. And sure, maybe you get to be a special servant who has a special servant job and does important servant tasks, and you get nice clothes and more stuff and a slightly bigger house than the rest of the servants, but make no mistake, you work for them. It doesn't feel like society works for us by providing us with housing and healthcare in exchange for us pitching in. It feels like we work for society to keep the money printers hot and the whole charade going. They give us tiny ass apartments and expensive groceries just so we don't die and can keep working. Also, they can take back the money they let us hold for two seconds when we have to spend our paychecks on rent and food. We're basically at the point that inspired the founding fathers to start this whole America thing. There are selfish assholes who are fucking over the rest of us for their own personal benefit. Well, to take a cue from the founding fathers, this is what we have government for, right? In 2016, Donald Trump was elected the 45th president of the United States of America. And eight years later, he's still deeply embedded in our national consciousness. People have think peace to death Trump's appeal, but I think his popularity can be neatly summarized in his slogan, make America great again. You could argue these four words have grown to represent something beyond Trump. Make America great again. A yearning to return to the good old days, when we were the good guys who beat fascism, and the air was thick with hope before the corporations absolutely fucked us. Politics is supposed to be our avenue to change fucked up shit, because politicians are supposed to be public servants who work for some greater ideal. Yeah, I learned about your job in school. You're a civil servant. We're technically your boss. Oh, please. To maintain that life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for the average American. That's why we vote for them and give them the power to shoot people and put people in jail. If the billionaires and corporations are too powerful, the government is supposed to be detached from this Wall Street growth cult bullshit and be fair and impartial and make shit better for everyone. Problem is, politics seems just as fucked as everything else nowadays. Super PACs and lobbyists combine to choose who gets elected and then tell them what to do once they're elected. Politicians are basically corrupt in all but name, and that's when they aren't being super obvious about it. Even if you were to try and argue that all this money in DC has no effect on anyone's integrity, I have no faith in anyone in Congress to get jack shit done. These morons can't even do something as basic and universally agreed upon as a good idea like getting rid of a penny, or getting rid of daylight savings, or getting rid of the electoral college. How the fuck are they supposed to fix the gigantic economic, climate, or cultural issues facing America? I think the two-party system is a really good representation of the farce American politics has turned into. Isn't it very convenient that every issue of national importance can be divided into two sides that are the polar opposite of each other? In a two-party system, there's no room for nuance. You're either with us or against us. Each party has a ginormous fucking umbrella of random policy points that have nothing to do with each other, and you have to decide if you're on this red fucking team or blue fucking team so you can yell at the other team about how they're the ones destroying democracy or America. In the meantime, it really does not matter who the fuck is in charge because both parties are just gonna keep the status quo status quoing. It's all just reality TV to give us an easy target to channel our anger 
towards and distract us from the fact that neither party is ever going to get rid of the growth bullshit or rein in the selfish asshole people in charge because they are the selfish asshole people in charge. Politics isn't about making shit better for the average American. It's about propping up the current system for as long as possible and distracting you from the fact that all this growth is unsustainable because rich people don't like riots. If you want a vibe check on the current state of American politics, look no further than this year's presidential election, which is the political equivalent equivalent of a serial killer coming up to you and asking you if you want to be stabbed or stabbed in a new, more demographically appealing way. And if you don't choose which way you want to get stabbed, you're actually not doing your civic duty and spitting on the freedom our boys died for. I just think it's very funny that Trump and Kamala are going to end up being the nominees. Trump is Trump and Kamala is going to be the nominee without having a single vote cast for her by the common folk. If Russia had an election where the choices were between Putin or some hand-picked state-approved nominee, we'd be all over their asses about how their elections aren't free and fair. But in America, when you get to choose between two goons, it's the pinnacle of democracy. It's so hard to precisely pin down why the vibe sucks, and I feel like some people try and use that to make the justification that things actually don't suck just because you can't articulate the suckage. But I don't think that means things don't suck. I think that means they've confused us so hard, we don't even know what we're fighting. So what the fuck do we actually do? Shit is fucks, and the revolution seems further away than ever. In the 60s and 70s, there was this period of angst in the world when the hippies and John Lennons asked us to imagine. Then the FBI and CIA came in and assassinated everyone and tranquilized the masses because they were getting too unruly. So now, we don't even dare to imagine a better world. We just throw our hands up in the air and say, well, this is it. People say if you want things to change, go vote, as if either of these parties are gonna make the real changes that need to happen. Let me tell you what's gonna happen no matter who gets elected. They're gonna keep lying to us and dangling the promise of the American dream in front of our faces and never give it to us because it's not in their interest to let their serfs get too many ideas about what they deserve. Despite what you may interpret from this whole video, I'm really not trying to be a doomer. Yes, everything is bad and I'm honestly pessimistic that things can get better but I'm too fucking pissed about the world they took away from us to not try and rage against the dying of the light. I don't have the answers. Voting doesn't seem to work. Protesting doesn't seem to work. I think we have to start by waking the fuck up. Poor against poor, race against race. That's what the people in charge want to distract us from the fact that this whole thing is a ticking time bomb that's only gonna explode after everyone's had their share of gluttony. I also think there's some very practical things we can do to improve the current situation. Raise taxes on the rich and corporations and maybe give everyone a universal basic income or if that's too spicy for you, at least raise the minimum wage literally any amount. Minimum wage hasn't been raised since 2009, okay? In 2009, we have $5 foot longs. Times are changing, you gotta get people more money. Institute a healthcare system that isn't the worst fucking healthcare system imaginable for a country as rich as we are. Get rid of super PACs and lobbyists, and please, for the love of God, replace the Electoral College with a popular vote. If you go to the Wikipedia page for Electoral College, these are the examples they give. These are not elections you want to be associated with. To be honest though, I think all these solutions are just band-aids on the big problem of infinite growth and its consequences. I think we need to imagine a totally new way for the system to work. Right now, we can only imagine a capitalist growth world, and our entire systems are built with this underlying assumption in mind that we always need to be producing more, and the next generation needs to be larger and more productive to care for the increasingly larger generations which are increasingly living longer. Maybe instead of focusing on growth at all costs, we should focus on sustaining and maintaining what we already have. Listen everyone, it's okay if you buy less shit. Yeah, some companies are gonna go out of business, but I don't give a fuck about these companies. I give a fuck about living on a planet that has trees on it. And who the fuck cares if we can't always be making new, better, cooler shit? We all know deep in our hearts this hedonistic, materialistic shit doesn't actually make us happy anyway. I think one of the core questions we have to ask ourselves is, what do we owe each other? In the current system, we don't owe each other jack shit. Billionaires have absolutely no incentive to make shit better for other people besides their own conscience. And that test has fucking failed. F minus. But at the end of the day, we're humans. And I think it's in our human nature to fucking love 
other humans. To be very real, we don't have to give a fuck about each other, and a lot of us will probably be dead by the time these problems really start to fuck shit up. But I think we'd all be better off if we did give a fuck about each other, and fucking loved each other like the fucking universe fucking intended us to. The thing we're really fighting against is the worst of human nature. Selfishness, distrust, hate. It is light versus dark out here. Those are really the stakes. We have more in common with each other than we think, and we're more alike than we are different. We're the fucking United States of America, yo. Look at Europe. Those bozos can't figure out how to get along with each other. But we figured it out as a bunch of states with a bunch of different people. And now we all get to eat buffalo wings and deep dish pizza and Nashville hot chickens. And yeah, sometimes we got beef with each other, but what family doesn't? I think it's time for us to let go of the past. Yes, things seemed awesome in the 1950s, but it ain't the 1950s anymore. Those jobs aren't coming back. And besides, those motherfuckers still had to have milk delivered to them. Now we got milk in our fridges, we got Nintendo Switches, or Xboxes if you wanna be really patriotic. We got a lot less sexism, and racism, and homophobia, and all the other isms and phobias. We don't need to go back to being some fantasy version of America. We just need to be America. Love each other, buy less stuff, and we'll figure it out. I hope. Stay safe, stay sane, I'll catch you next time. Peace!